Sometimes my students make statements like, I didn't realize when I took chemistry that I was actually taking another math class. To a certain extent, they're correct. Chemistry is a quantitative study of matter and energy. And to be perfectly honest, the extent of math we utilize in a high school chemistry class rarely goes beyond the fundamental basics of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and solving some simple algebraic equations for an unknown like x. We also use rounding skills and things like powers and fractions, but that's really about it. Having a true mastery of these fundamentals is one major key to success and efficiency in your study of chemistry. What do I mean by mastery? Mastery in this context can be thought of as accuracy, getting the answer correct, in a reasonable amount of time. A quick aside here for some memory science. There are two main types of memory in the brain, working memory and long-term memory. Working memory is where your brain processes information and computes things. Long-term memory is where your brain stores info that you have learned. To make a comparison, two of the main components of a computer are its memory, or RAM, this is where info for quick access for using in computations and running applications is kept. This is like your brain's working memory. The second one is the hard drive, which holds the data and information that can be recalled and sent to the RAM memory when needed. This is like your brain's long-term memory. Keep this analogy in mind whenever you hear the terms working memory and long-term memory being used. The more automatic an answer or solving a problem is, the easier a problem may seem and the more efficiently you'll be able to solve it. This is because your working memory doesn't have to spend a lot of processing power on working out arithmetic facts or simple algebraic rearrangements. You can invest that additional processing power on seeing and applying the relationships that exist behind the mathematical operations that you see on the paper. So how can you assess your mastery of these fundamentals? Well, try this. Grab a piece of paper and a pencil and something to time yourself with. After I finish explaining this, you'll see a screen with four problems. Pause the video and time yourself to see how long it takes you to solve each of the problems without using a calculator. Resume the video and repeat for the other three operations. Then we'll take a look at how you did and think about what that means. Here are the answers to these problems. Feel free to pause the video for a moment and check your answers for correctness or accuracy. Now keep this in mind. Ultimately, accuracy is more important to us than speed. That is to say, we are more interested in being able to get the correct answer rather than getting an answer quickly. Before we can ride a bike quickly and enter a race, we have to make sure we can start and stop, keep our balance, and navigate safely. Gradually, as we get more comfortable, then we can begin to increase our speed. So how was your accuracy with the problems? If you didn't get them all correct, then that's where you want to start your practice. Work on practicing fundamentals without a calculator until you can solve problems like this with 100% accuracy. Good old-fashioned flashcards can be a great tool to use here. If you got them all correct, then let's take a look at your times. If you were able to solve each set of four problems within 12 seconds each, then you've got a pretty good mastery of these fundamental skills. Great job! If not, then practice these types of problems until you are able to solve at an average rate of about three seconds per problem or faster. Again, flashcards are a great tool to help you with improving your problem-solving rate. You may be thinking, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing? Come on! I did this stuff in elementary and middle school. Why do I need to be doing this stuff again? Well, that's because in earlier grades, that's what you were learning, the fundamentals. And just like riding a bike or playing an instrument or a sport, you don't just forget the fundamentals and move on. You continue to use them as building blocks to help you achieve bigger and better tasks. The same is true here. If your accuracy wasn't good in an area or you're not quite to that three seconds per problem speed yet, there are tons of tools available to help you. 
and you don't need to feel bad about the fact that you might need to use them. The old adage, use it or lose it, very much applies to our mathematical and computational skills. If we don't use the basics regularly, we start to get rusty. But just like riding a bike, once you've learned it once, it usually doesn't take long to get the hang of it again and continue improving.